Hey everybody, uh, day 19 and day two of 10 of uh, the primer for anti-racist white educators. Uh, so back with Luke. Hello. Uh, and the second principle of the primer that we want to talk about today is learn. learn. The basic idea here is that um, white folks like us need to take ownership of learning about different perspectives. We are responsible for uh, putting ourselves out there to understand or try to understand, try to empathize with people of color. Um, we talked yesterday about listening. That can happen in person when we listen to other folks and, and listen to their truths and take them as truths. But it can also be our own responsibility too to go out and read and watch documentaries, um, listen to podcasts, etc., who are voices of color um, and can share their perspective with us. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think that that piece of it's not it's not the responsibility of people of color to educate us. You really have to take ownership of that. And there's always if you built the relationship of trust with a colleague of color or a friend of color, um, then yeah, by all means you can have those conversations. But it's about not relying relying on them to be coming up with the um, to make up for your your ignorance. You, you have you have to invest the time yourself to get to know it. Um, you know, when they, they talk about this kind of like pie chart and the, the pie is everything that you could possibly know, right? A sliver of that is, I know what I know, right? I, I'm a history teacher. I know certain historical facts that I have to teach. And then there are things that I know I don't know, right? Like I don't know calculus. I know that I don't know that. Then there's a chunk. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good. Uh, then, there's a, then there's that chunk that's where I think I know, but I don't actually know. And, you know, things like that, that's disconsciousness. That's where, you know, you say when people say black lives matter and you respond all lives matter, right? That's disconsciousness because you're, you're assuming you know what they're talking about and you know their experience and you're coming up with something that's better or different or more inclusive when you're not actually listening. Yeah. But the biggest piece, right, is the unconsciousness, the things I don't even know that I don't know yet. And if I rely just on people of color in my life to try to fill in that gap, I'm going to always be found wanting and always be found lacking. So we look to experts. We look to people who've been doing this work a lot longer than we have, certainly, and who, who live a life in which they have stories to tell that can help to understand our, our worldview and can help inform our practice in the classrooms for sure. So we've got a couple of sources here in front of us we're going to show you. This is just scratching the surface, which we'll talk about more in just a little bit. I'm going to grab one right here. It's one of my personal heroes. This is um, March. This is the John Lewis story. It's a three-part series, and it's um, phenomenal. So if you're teaching U.S. history or if you're just trying to understand perspectives of folks who've been in the struggle, it's a really great place, uh, great place to go. Yeah, and there's great graphic novels that are kind of introductory. I, I really like the March series. Incognito is another one. Um, to kind of immerse yourself into stories in a graphic and literature basis um, to hear those stories. Another absolute go-to, of course, is Donna Nazi Coast, Between the World and Me. Um, that book, more than any other, really, as a parent, you know, this is a man who's pouring out his heart to his child and, and talking about um, his experiences and what advice he has, and that was foundational for me to be able to understand um, just a little bit of what the, the, the black experience is for black men in this country and for black individuals. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm an expert or that it becomes my experience, but it definitely it, it hit my heartstrings and I took a lot away from it intellectually and emotionally. All right, I'm going to throw Michelle Alexander up here, The New Jim Crow, uh, which is a phenomenal resource. It's dense. It, it takes a while to read and a, a while to, to really digest and think about some of her ideas and arguments, but she's basically tying the thread of race um, through from the beginning of the country all the way up to today and how we can see see that thread still affect us in uh, in particular in the prison system uh, but she she dives into a lot of other topics in there too um, incredibly valuable resource and a lot of what she writes about is also informed uh, informed the documentary 13th um, I think she's even in it right she's, yeah, she she's is. featured in mm -hmm. it uh, that'd be another great place to go it's on Netflix check that out yeah it's an excellent watch. We break it down in my race in the U.S. class and have a lot of great conversations. And related to that is Brian Stevenson, Just Mercy, um, is Brian Stevenson's story about how he started working with children and youth and men of color, women of color that have been wrongfully convicted. 
and it's very much related to the new Jim Crow, uh, but it really, this humanizes it, and you get into some really intense stories um, of what, what it's like to experience our so-called justice system as a person of color. And then, don't, yeah, fiction, man. Oh, I'm going to give you that one because I haven't read it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Tell me about so, it. So, fiction, Americana. Uh, this is an amazing book. Uh, it's, a, it's a fictional account, but it's very much based on the author's experience as being an African immigrant. You know, you may have noticed that all the books we're talking about are from an African-American perspective, and that's because over the last few years, like Luke and I both r realize our gapping knowledge in those areas, and so we've been kind of immersing ourselves in that. There are still plenty of gaps that we have not hit on, right? Um, I still need to learn more about the Latino and Latina experience. For I need sure. to learn more about what it's like to be a Native American in today's world, about the Muslim, you know, perspective of what that's like being an American in the world. Um, so, you know, this is not comprehensive, but Americana for, for me was, I had spent so much time in the African American experience of what it's like to be a black a American, uh, and this really helped me to, to broaden my horizons of what it meant to be black and how different people experience blackness in America. There's definitely similar threads, uh, but this is a great work of fiction that you can get into and, you know, get lost in and, and really start to get those experiences. So it doesn't have to be nonfiction. You don't have to sit down with an encyclopedia. You don't have to sit, you know, it can be fiction. It can be documentaries. It can be movies, right? Moonlight is a fantastic movie to, um, to get a hint of the experience of a black man, specifically a black gay man in, in America. One thing that I think is important to acknowledge here is to also say that no matter how much you read or how many movies you watch, you are not an expert ever in the experience of a person of color. Uh, you're simply informing yourself about other worldviews and I think showing a little empathy perhaps to try to understand the way somebody else walks through life. But it's dangerous to assume that you're, you, you then have a level of expertise in that. Um, it, it can inform your teaching practices, it can inform the way you carry yourself professionally and the way you see the world, um, but at the same time, you simply can't experience the world in the way that a person of color might. Yeah. We, we all are, are, you know, strive to be lifelong learners and to shrink that level of disconsciousness and unconsciousness that we have, and you can, you can scratch the surface by getting into some of these, and just let it build empathy in you, right? That you don't know all the stories and that this will just start to open up your eyes to things that are outside of your experience. We all start somewhere, so wherever you're at, pick up a book, one of these great ones, watch a documentary, and start informing yourself and, and relying less on people of color to always tell you what is happening and what it means and things like that. Um, you can do it. We, I, you know, we've come a long way from where we were a few years ago. A lot longer to, a lot further to go. A lot longer to go. For sure. All right, we'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks, team.